rise up to your feet. Put a mile, put your mighty shout together and welcome Pastor Franklin. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for, for this morning. We ask for your help that your presence will be here with us. In the preaching of your word will be with power and with the Holy Ghost and assurance. Bless our time here, Lord. Transform us by the power of your word. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may take your seat. Amen. Let's go to Matthew chapter 13 verse 33 and see another parable. It says, Another parable spake he unto them. The kingdom of heaven is like unto living which a woman took and hid in three measures of milk till the whole was living. Amen. Amen. Jesus is saying that the kingdom of heaven it's like living. Living is yeast. That's what they put in bread. Which a woman took and hid in three measures of milk till the whole was living. There are many truths hidden in it. The first one is that in the kingdom of God you can experience growth. Amen. Don't think that the kingdom of God is afar. But the kingdom of God is among you. The kingdom of God is within you. And other translations say the kingdom of God is in you. So you are the kingdom of God. Because the living of the kingdom of God causes things to grow. Causes things to rise. Amen. 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 Change is on the way. Amen. Growth is coming. Amen. 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 Whatever is small today can become big tomorrow. Amen. Job 8 verse 7 says that though your beginning may be small, your latter end shall greatly increase. Amen. Amen. Zechariah 4 verse 10 says that who has despised the day of small beginnings? When you are beginning small in the kingdom of God, it is not a problem. Because God is a specialist of making things go. Amen. Amen. And the door rises. And that is the same thing that is going to happen to your life. Amen. Amen. The other thing we can deduce from baking, the bakery, is that so when they put the dough, the yeast in the, in the dough, it becomes a different type of bread. There's something called a living bread. That is without yeast. You can try it and see it doesn't taste nice. But the one that has living in it or yeast in it tastes nice. The living of the kingdom of God makes your life nice. When you put bread down, everybody will pass by the one that does not have yeast. It is undesirable. But the same bread, you put yeast in it and it is desirable to everyone. Whatever makes your life unattractive, whatever makes you not favored, whatever makes you not selected, they select 20 people, you never make the list. But that change is coming. Because the living will enter your life and will make you desirable. Amen. Your bosses will choose you. Amen. When they are looking for people, they will look for you. Amen. Amen. Because something is entering your life because you are in the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 And also, when they put living in the door, it rises and becomes lighter. You take the same door. When the living has worked through it, it is lighter than before. The burdens are lifted. The heaviness is lifted. 
If you are battling with heaviness, it's just a matter of time. In the kingdom of God, all those burdens will be lifted. Amen. Because that is what living does to the dough. It causes it to become lighter. When they bake the bread from the oven and you take it, I tell you, it feels like paper. Paper weight. But the same bread that went inside was heavy. Amen. Living has the power to transform things. And that is why Jesus is using it to explain to you what would happen to your life. That there will be transformation and there will be positive transformation. There will be growth. Amen. It's not always going to be small. It's, you're not always going to be down. That change is coming. Anyone that has stuck with God and has remained faithful and held on to God, the end is always the same because they grow. Amen. That is one way we can look at this scripture. The other way, based on what Jesus said, go back to the scripture, Matthew 13 verse 33, is that your life and my life can be described as being in three parts. It says that the kingdom of heaven is like unto living which a woman took and hid in three measures of dough or of meal. There are three parts to you. And the living of the kingdom of God must enter all those three parts. There is more to just the you we see. If you see First Thessalonians 5.23, it says that, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. God should sanctify you completely. Shouldn't leave any part out. And then, they put the semicolon there. Which means that now, we are going to break down this part. And he says that, I pray God your whole what, spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless. That means that when your sanctification is complete, it affects three things. It has to affect your spirit, it has to affect your soul, and it has to affect your body. And Jesus says that the kingdom of God is like unto living which a woman took and hid in three measures of flour or meal or dough. Those three measures are your spirit, your soul, and your body. And the kingdom of God must affect all these three. Amen. <clears throat> you cannot live your life like the locker room of a public gym. Those places when you go, you say some of the lockers are open, some of them are closed. Like some parts of your life, this one, the living has affected. That one, the living has not affected. No. It must affect all three parts. Amen. So, let's take them one by one. I don't know if we we'll finish today, but let's start from the spirit. So you have three parts. You are a spirit. And you have a soul. And you live in a body. Just like this building has windows that you can look outside. Your spirit is inside you. And looking at me right now through your eyes, which are your windows. Your body is just a container. That is why when you die, you leave it here. And it goes back to earth. It becomes dead. But the real person is inside you. And that is the person the Bible says, the inner man. There is an inner man in you. There is someone there we have never seen before. I have never met Isaac before. But I have seen his body before. But the real person is inside. That is why in the hospital sometimes they tell stories of 
people experiencing uh, out of body experience. There was a lady that was, they did a surgery on. And after the surgery, she kept getting sick. Instead of getting better, she was rather becoming sick. And she kept telling the doctor that, you left the, the scissors inside my belly. And he said, how do you know? He said, I, I came out of my body. I could see you operating on me. Even though I was not out, I could see all of you operating on me. And they didn't believe her. Because it means they had to go back and open her up. And when they did, the scissors was inside her. How did it happen? Because the spirit came out. You are not this body we see. At all. No, no, no. If you see my spirit, it doesn't have zero pack. It has six pack. Don't bring yourself. This one is just a container. I'll tell you very soon why my spirit has six pack and my body may not have. When I you remind me. Amen. Your spirit is the most important part of you. Of all the three, your spirit is the most important because that is the part that relates to God. The Bible says that God is a spirit. God relates to your spirit part. You communicate to God from your spirit part. And Jesus is saying that the spirit part the living of the kingdom must affect it. Amen. Amen. Paul is saying here under the Holy, influence of the Holy Spirit that when you become born again, when you are being sanctified, it starts from your spirit, then your soul, then your body. God's focus is from the spirit. Because that is the first thing that needs to be saved. When you become born again, the living affects the spirit first. But you realize that the body and the soul has not been changed. That is why you may be born again, but sometimes you think some things and you are, ah, am I really saved? How can I be thinking about these things? Because the spirit is saved first. But the soul and the, and the body, the sanctification is a process. Amen. But most of us have it wrong. We have changed the order. We focus more on the, on the body than the, the soul. And if at all, we get to the spirit. You wake up in the morning. You clean your body. Put the makeup on. <laughs> Put perfume on it. Check the mirror and do the hair. <laughs> you go into your closet, then you begin to check. How am I going to dress the body today? Is it going to be yellow shoe and yellow bag? Or a yellow top and yellow shoe? And you do all those things. Amen. Sometimes you come back and say, I don't like this lipstick I put on the body. Let me take it off and change it. Because the shade of red is not really like the shade of the shoe. So then you change it. Amen. You make everything possible for the body to step out of the room Looking very smart. But, is your spirit dressed? Because you may be stepping out, dressed, looking smart, but your spirit is naked. Your spirit has unkempt hair. Your spirit looks like a homeless person. But in the body, you look smart. Executive. When we see you, 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 your dressing just shouts smart. But when you see your spirit, it shouts something else. Amen. We 
have turned the order, the order of the importance, we've turned it around. We are thinking more about the body. People say, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't want to eat some things. I don't like junk food. I like the greens. And you know, now we even take that green and we put it in a bullet, uh, the smoothie thing, and, and we drink everything because we want to be healthy. But have you wondered what food is my spirit eating? Bible says that when you come into the kingdom and the living affects your spirit, the first thing that happens is that it is born again. It is a baby. Every baby needs food to grow. So you may be, eat, you may be uh, eating healthy, going about. You are a very healthy person. Yes. But your spirit is malnourished. Your spirit is suffering from kashioko. Your spirit looks emaciated. Yeah. But in the body, you look perfect. But spiritually, how do you look? The order is the spirit first. The body is the last thing. Because it is useless. You will leave it here. It will go back to the earth. It has, it has no value, no benefit. That is why God hasn't waste time to start from your body. It is completely useless. But we focus more on the, on the flesh. I got to look smart, you know. When you wear your suit, you want to have a flat tummy so that you can pattern it. Yeah. Go and check your spirit. Can your spirit pattern that? <laughs> Amen. People go... People say, oh, I want to eat fruits. So that you be healthy. Fruits, uh, fruit is good for health. You know, it keeps you healthy. But do you know that your, your, your spirit too needs some fruits? Galatians 5, 21, 20. It talks about the fruits of the spirit. Those are the fruits your body needs. Not banana, not grapes, not uh, <laughs> somebody's help with me. Go down, go down. I want the fruits of the spirit. But the fruit of the spirit is love. You see, whenever you have the opportunity to hate, but you decide to love, you have eaten the fruit of love into your spirit. When you have the opportunity to, to be sad and without peace, but you decide against that, that I am still going to be joyful. The situation is not good. I'm not really happy, but I am still going to be joyful. You are eating a certain fruit which is healthy for your spirit. Amen. Don't just focus on buying fruits from the grocery shop. Get some fruits into your spirit. Amen. And many people have gym memberships. You have even signed up, but you don't go. And every month you keep paying. We want to be healthy. We want to be athletic. You want a slender body. You want, you want the muscles to fit your t-shirt when you wear it. The guys. They have other exercises for ladies. So that as you do it, your adipose tissues also look firm. You do all those things. But what about your spirit? What exercises are you giving to your spirit? You don't pray. You don't fast. You don't pray in the Holy Ghost. One way to build your spirit into a strong person is to pray in the Holy Ghost. Jude 1 verse 20. 
Jude 1 20. We are getting closer. Jude, Jude 20. Okay. Say, but ye, beloved, building yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, it builds you up spiritually. It charges you. Bible says, I hear that pressing and unknown tongues edifies his body. That word is to build. Like you are, you, you, you are, you are putting up a building. It edifies you. It builds your muscles in the spirit. So when you are going to LA Fitness and all those places and you are getting biceps and triceps, get some for your spirit. Fast and pray. Become prayerful. Build muscles. Satan shows up. You stand up. You say no because you are strong. But you don't have any muscles. When Satan shows up then you want to call your pastor's number. He's sleeping. You have your speed that. <laughs> Amen. That is why I'm saying that I may have zero pack. But you may be surprised that I have more packs than you in the spirit. Because maybe you don't pray. You don't fast. Everything you have is in the flesh. And the flesh is completely useless. It will go back to, the, to, to death. It can't do anything. And you even know it is, it is, you even know it doesn't have any value. Just decide not to bat for three days and see. Right before your eyes, it will start decomposing. And that is what you are investing in. Bible says that bodily exercise profited little. Not spiritual exercise. It profits a lot. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Fast. The whole year, the only time you fasted was when we were doing 21 days of fasting and prayer. Even that one, you didn't do all the 21 days. <laughs> Amen. That is why Jesus is saying, the spirit, the, the living must affect the spirit. When you come into the kingdom of God, the spirit must be affected. It must be affected in the kingdom of God. Amen. Because the spirit is important, you need to also think about where the spirit is going. Because the spirit does not die. When you die, you leave, you leave the container here. But the real spirit does not die. It will live in eternity forever. But what is happening to your spirit? Where is your spirit going? Bible says that when you die, you receive a reception. You will get a reception. You don't have a choice. You just one A or B. You just one one of them you get. Luke Luke sixteen verse nineteen to like twenty seven or so. Let's run through it quickly. Then we see to explain. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine lily. Those days, if you are not rich, you can't buy purple material. Oh, no, we haven't finished that one. And fed sumptuously every day. Let's go on. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sauce. He was so poor that he didn't have health insurance. No nurse wanted to take care of him. So the dogs would come in. They would dress the, the sword. They would lick all the pass away and clean it up every day. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was buried, oh, sorry, was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. He was carried by angels. The angels came to meet him. The moment he showed up in eternity, they met him. Like people will meet you at the airport sometimes. They are carrying a sticker. 
<laughs> at your arrows. Uh, yes, and they are waiting for you. When you die, you will have a reception. Either angels will come and carry your spirit. Or Isaiah 14 verse 9 will happen to you. Isaiah 14 verse 9. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. Some people, angels will meet them. Hell will come and meet them. Give me another version. There's a version that says that hell is agog. They are jubilating. They are ready. They are shouting to me. The grave below is all as there to meet thee at your coming. It's a reception. Your spirit never dies. All dead people are alive. Everyone who is dead. If your parents are dead, they are alive. The only question is, where are they in, the, in eternity? Who met them when they arrived at that airport? Did angels carry them into Abraham's bosom? Or did they send a welcoming party from hell? Amen. Let's, let's go back to the look. We are reading, we are, what verse were we on? Yes, bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes. This scripture doesn't mean that rich people go to hell. Because he saw Abraham in heaven. Abraham was very rich when he was on earth. It's the way the guy lived his life. Amen. He lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this way. So when you die, your spirit will move along with all the memories. All the memory will still be there. Because when he saw Lazarus, he actually remembered that this is Lazarus. And I used to send him. So, Abraham, tell him to go and get me water. He, he, does, he didn't know that the situation has changed. All your memory will be there. You will remember every opportunity you had to serve God which you didn't take. That is what leads to regret in heaven. Heaven is not all joy. Bible says that some people will be in outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. They are in heaven. They are not in hell. Because that story says that they threw a banquet and when they came, they found some people there who were not supposed to be there. That cannot be hell. The banquet couldn't have been in hell. Then they said, catch them. They are not wearing the proper attire. Throw them into the outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Heaven is not a communist state. Where everybody gets the same housing. Everybody gets the same housing. The same housing design. You see it, rows of housing, the same design. Like an estate in Ghana. No. Some places will have better amenities. Some places will not have light. Where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth, outer darkness. Some places will have light. Some places will have bigger mansions. Some places will have bunker beds. Some will have sheds. Some will be homeless in heaven. But thank God you made it. You didn't go to hell. <laughs> At least you made it. But look, eternity is eternity. It's not 40 years. It's not 70 years. To make a mistake and leave as a homeless person or on the poor levels of the ladder in heaven for eternity. It doesn't change. That is a, the rest of whenever time, if it can ever expire. That is why you need to seize the moment now if you have the opportunity to serve God. Because the Bible says that those who turn others unto righteousness will shine with the brightness of the firmament. They will be like the stars forever. That is how 
the grade will be determined in heaven. What have you done for God? What did you use your life for? And you remember, so if I had done this, instead of giving me this banker bed, they would have given me this motel. If I had done this thing for God, all the memories will be there. It will come flooding. The guy saw Lazarus and he said that this is Lazarus. I know him. Send him to bring me water. Amen. And your spirit will go with all the sensory functions. Bible says that first of all, he saw how could somebody we went to the, 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 we went to the wake up and we put the guy in the cemetery. How could he see? Because the spirit is alive. The guy is not dead. The guy, nobody dies. In that sense. You just pass on. That is just a transition. There was a time where you, all you had was being in the, your mother's womb. You are swimming in the, uh, the, the, the fluid. All that you knew, that was your world. But one day you came out and you left the sack. One day you get out of this world and you leave the body and there is something else ahead. Amen. And he said, I'm in torment. He could feel pain. He could feel pain. Hell is not a place for you and I. If you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, you better make sure you give your life to Jesus because when you die, you would feel pain. Here we take a bottle of water. My daughter, she will take a bottle of water. That is it, she won't drink again. <laughs> it's what? She doesn't care whether I bought it or not. But over there, he said, if I could get a drop. I mean, where can you go that the place is so terrible that a drop of water feels like luxury? Where? There's not a place for you to go. You need to get right with God. And if you are born again before, but you are not living correct, you need to get your life right with God. Before the day happens, because it will happen to any of us any time. Every day we wake up and we have life, we thank God because it could have happened. Because it happened to people whilst we were sleeping. Amen. And Jesus says that in the kingdom, your spirit must be affected by the living. It needs to, it needs to be impacted by your salvation. How can your spirit be affected by the Because it's one thing to say, yes, the spirit must be but now, Pastor, how do you do it? How can you be affected? Expose your spirit to God. That's the only way. Expose your spirit to God. Do spiritual exercises. Pray. Pray. Build your spirit up. Fellowship in the word of God. Listen to more preaching. The preaching is the spoken word of God. When a, somebody who is anointed or speaking another anointing is, is preaching the word of God, it has power. The more you listen, the more it changes you. John 15 verse 3. It says that you are clean because I have, I, 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 I have spoken to you. Or as you have, you didn't say I have preached to you. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. It is a word that cleans. So sometimes when it seems like as I cry is too much, it's always talking about listening to podcasts. There is a reason. The more you listen, the more it affects your spirit. The podcast does not affect your flesh. It affects your spirit. That's why the more you listen, the more you change. You do not realize that you are changing. But one day you take a snapshot of your life and realize that I'm not the kind of person I used to be. That's what the people were saying in the, 
in the film stars. Because they've realized that they've changed. The more you expose your spirit to God, the more your spirit will change. The more the living will affect your spirit. Amen. And you need to do it. Because Jesus said that it must be. The spirit must be affected. The soul must be affected. The flesh must be affected. All these three parts must be affected. Amen. I hope you've learned something. Amen. Next week we'll talk about the soul and we'll talk about the body. Amen. Amen. Let's just bow down our heads with every head bowed. Let me ask it again because it's a matter of who comes to meet you when you die. Whether angels come to receive you or hell is a stair ready to meet you at your coming. Jesus says that you must be born again and otherwise you cannot enter the kingdom of God. And Romans says that to be born again, you need to believe in your heart that God sent Jesus to die for you, raised him up for the dead. And you need to confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. If you've never done this before, chances are that you are not saved. Because I didn't put the prescription there. That is the prescription in the Bible. You need to confess Jesus as Lord. And you need to believe. Believing, most people believe. But most people have never actually confessed Jesus. That I want to receive you. Come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Amen. And if you are here, you've never done that before. It's a good day to do it. Because you can be in a garage for 20 years. you never become a car. You can go to church for all your life. It doesn't make you somebody who is saved. To be saved, you must fulfill the scripture as it said in Romans. You must confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. There was a time I did it. I was shy. Unfortunately for me, I was sitting at the back of the church. I had to walk all the way to the front. But I did it and I'm glad I did it. If you've never given your life to Jesus, this is a good day. Just show by hand and we'll pray with you. Amen. Or you have been living your life. You know that you are saved. But you know you are not close to God. One or two things have happened and you are far from God. And you need to get a right with God. It's also an opportunity to be right with God. Amen. Anyone like that so that we just pray with the person and make sure that we all make it to the right place. Amen. Just one more time of asking. If you are at the airport, you always hear the message. They mention the name. They say, last call. Last call. The gate is closing. Wherever you are, come now. Come now. The gate is closing. Gate D24. We are closing the gate. Come now. It's the same call. You've never given your life to Jesus before. But you want to get right with God. It's time to lift your hand and let's pray. And let's make sure of it. Amen. Well, we thank God we are all saved. Amen. Let's just pray together. Father, we thank you for sending Jesus to die for us. We accept the free gift of salvation. Let the living affect our spirit, Lord. May there be change in us, Lord. May we rise up to serve you. May we be more spiritual. In the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can put your hands together. Is the communion ready? Let's have.